There are a number of ways to play through Fallout 3. You can use big guns like the minigun or flamer. You can stick to handguns. You can keep things up close and personal by using melee weapons. But what if you didn't want to use any weapons? Can you beat Fallout 3 without attacking anything? Because we aren't attacking anything, strength, perception, and charisma are all worthless here. High endurance gives us more hit points, high intelligence gives us more skill points when we level up, luck at 10 provides a plus 5 to all skills, and agility increases our sneak skill, which can be useful later on. After assigning special points, it was time for a completely normal birthday party. There was absolutely nothing strange about it at all. Then it's down to the reactor level, where we're given a BB gun, and we have to kill a rad roach. Huh. Well, that's a shame. My first thought was that maybe there's a dialogue option to skip the rad roach. Maybe you can tell dad that you don't want to kill anything. No, that's not an option. Alright, well, maybe if you wait long enough, he'll take the BB gun and will kill the rad roach himself. So I started manipulating time. At one point, over 100 in-game hours were passing every second. Unfortunately, God doesn't like it when you play with time, and the game crashed. There's only one option that will work, and it's something I'm not particularly fond of doing, but it's nerf or nothing, so here we go. What we have to do is use an exploit to clip through the wall. What you do is get yourself in a corner, or up against any wall really, then rapidly quick save and quick load until you clip through the wall. I tried several different places, but the one that worked for me was the space between the stairs and the reactor room. Once you clip through the wall, the game places you in the lower level of Vault 101, and because you can only be there if your objective is to escape the vault, you've now skipped the Rad Roach and can proceed as usual, just as a 10 year old instead of a 19 year old. For some reason, doing this skip means that the Vault 101 guards don't spawn, so escaping the vault isn't too difficult. Just open the Overseer's Tunnel and… what? Children cannot use that. Alright, well, all hope isn't gone yet. We just have to do the wall glitch again. And doing that took me about 15 minutes. 15 agonizing minutes. I found that the door to the Vault 101 atrium works the best. As soon as you enter that space, back up into the door and let the spam fest begin. When you clip through the wall, you'll be placed at the door to the Capital Wasteland, where we can finally choose our tag skills. These were probably pretty obvious. Medicine, speech, and sneak. Out into the wasteland, I leveled up, dumped more points into tag skills, and picked Pacifist as my first perk, because combat skills like melee weapons and big guns are worthless. After arriving in Megaton, I spoke to Colin Moriarty about my father, bought some stim packs from Gob, received an interesting offer from Mr. Burke, then immediately ratted him out to Lucas Sims. Mayor Sims ran off and confronted Mr. Burke, and Burke killed him. I looted the corpse and made a horrifying discovery. It seems as though Burke is less than thrilled about me being a snitch, because he's coming after me. I thought, I hoped, that leaving Megaton would stop him, but it did not. With Burke hot on my trail, I had no time to waste. I made a beeline straight for Smith Casey's garage to rescue Dad. But, uh, guess what? In order to get into Vault 112, you have to press a switch and children cannot use that! Fuck, again. I had to go back to our old friend, the wall glitch. Oh, you're probably wondering what happened to the mall rats inside. Turns out that they can kill themselves by running into trash cans. Who knew? I was inside Smith Casey's garage for another solid 15 minutes, trying to clip through the wall in a variety of places. It didn't work once. But that's okay, we can just go straight to Little Lamplight and retrieve the geck. Not a big deal. Nothing interesting happened on the way to Little Lamplight. As you probably could have guessed, I avoided all enemies I found by sneaking past them or running in the opposite direction. The wall glitch in Little Lamplight is much easier than the others, and within a minute or two, I was swimming through the nothing on my way to Murder Pass. The shitty part about Murder Pass, and the entire Little Lamplight area as a whole, is that I can't use my Pip-Boy down there. Luckily, I had hotkeyed some stim packs, so I could use them without my Pip-Boy. The run through Vault 87 was about what I expected. Run past the super mutants, close the doors behind me to slow them down, all relatively normal compared to what's happened so far. Fox wasn't interested in chatting, but that's okay. He'll help you get the geck if you set him free, regardless of whether he asks for your help or not. You just have to go down the hallway and… you know, this children cannot use that thing is really starting to get old. Alright, fine, I'll get the fucking geck myself. I don't have a radiation suit, I don't have any radex or rad away either, but I couldn't use them even if I did. I cannot possibly understate what a gigantic pain in my ass this was. Dealing with the radiation is bad enough, 
But to make matters worse, there were super mutants shooting at me the entire time, because I couldn't kill them, so they just followed me in there. I figured a few things out after a couple dozen attempts. The first thing is that when you go to grab the Gek, move to the right a little bit and you'll get slightly less radiation. The second thing is that you shouldn't wear armor, it'll just slow you down. You can also stand in the doorway and you won't get any radiation. I did, after a lot of trial and error, manage to get the Gek and not die from radiation poisoning. As I made my way out, I wasn't captured by the Enclave and I wasn't sure why. In retrospect, that should have been my first clue that things were about to go horribly wrong. Nevertheless, I pushed onward until I was out of Murder Pass. And then this happened. You've made a grievous error in judgment. Watch your back! I have no idea how the fuck Burke got in there because the gate to Murder Pass was still closed. After the super mutants who had been following me killed Burke, I had another problem to deal with. Getting past the closed gate. You know what's coming. More wall glitching! This time it was made even harder by the super mutants attacking me. Because of course it had to be harder. After several millennia of spamming quick save and quick load, I clipped through the wall and made my escape. At this point, I wasn't too sure what to do next. The Enclave didn't capture me, so I couldn't escape their base. I figured I might as well just throw shit at the wall and hope something sticks. The first thing I did was see a doctor in Megaton to heal my radiation. Then I made my way to the Citadel. The guards wouldn't open the gate for me, sons of bitches. You know what? That's fine. I'll just make them let me in. I went back to Vault 87, ran past all the super mutants, went back to where I retrieved the Gek, then began my escape again. And finally, something worked out in my favor. The Enclave captured me. Good, I can actually beat the game now. All I have to do now is ignore the Enclave soldiers that are shooting at me, talk to the president, grab the virus, and I'm home free. Yeah, no. Guess who's back? Our old buddy, children cannot use that. I want to make it known that I stopped having fun a long time ago. I tried to glitch myself through the door. I wasn't sure what it would accomplish, but I tried it anyway. It didn't work, obviously. Why would it? So, it was time for Plan X. I'll just go to Project Purity and activate the bitch myself. Again, no. What are you, an idiot? Everyone knows children cannot use buttons. Okay, fine. I didn't want to do this, but I was left no choice. I'll just brute force my way into the Citadel. There's a path through some rocks and rubble that you can glitch through to get below the Citadel. Then you just enter the Citadel from within the Citadel. Easy peasy. It only took me 20 minutes and I only thought about killing myself a few times. Inside, I thought I could talk to Elder Lions, or anyone really, to advance the game. But alas, I could not. Either I had broken the game, or it had broken me. Either way, I can't beat Fallout 3 without attacking anything. Not this way. Well, I mean, there is one option left. See, I didn't have those button problems when I beat Fallout 3 as a baby. So, I guess that means we're going back to square one. I was born, changed nothing about my character from the defaults, including the name, and crawled to dad. Then the game softlocked itself or something because I couldn't move and dad wouldn't talk. Off to a fantastic start. I reloaded a save and we're back in business. Special, this time around, is almost the same. Almost. Not for any reason other than the fact that I forgot what it was the last time around. The next step is to do what I did in my first baby playthrough, which is close the door as soon as it opens, and if done correctly, the next door will remain open and you'll have access to the hallway. Jump into the loving arms of the void, and your next objective will be to escape Vault 101. Those of you who were unhappy about me using console commands to speed up the game in my first Fallout 3 baby playthrough will probably enjoy my suffering in this run because I'm not doing that this time. I play the game as a baby, at normal speed. I opened the Overseer's Tunnel and met my old foe, the Button. With bated breath, I pressed the E key, and the button activated. Out of the vault, I went to Megaton to speak to Lucas Sims. For some reason, when playing as a baby, you need to talk to him before you can use your Pip-Boy. I slowly, slowly, slowly ran towards Little Lamplight. I ain't fucking with no simulations. Timmy Noosebomb can stay in Tranquility Lane forever for all I care. On the way to Lamplight, I outran a Mr. Gutsy and nearly got fucked to death by two giant rad scorpions. Inside Little Lamplight, the first wall glitch worked easily, but the second proved to be a bit tougher because, as a baby, you can't jump as high as you can as an adult or even a child, which makes getting into position more challenging, though it's not impossible. Also, for anyone wondering, it took me about 25 minutes to go from Megaton to Little Lamplight. 
the run through Vault 87 was rough, though not as bad as I expected because the super mutants with melee weapons sometimes miss due to you being so low to the ground. In one of my previous runs, the super mutants followed me and outnumbered Fox to such an extreme degree that they killed him. I didn't want that to happen this time, so I cheesed it. And what I mean by that is that as soon as I entered a new area, like the test labs for instance, I used the same quick save quick load technique I've used throughout this run. For whatever reason, that stopped the super mutants from following me. Then I snuck past the super mutants and centaurs roaming the rooms and hallways on the way to Fox. I still couldn't speak to him, but I knew I'd be able to use the console to set him free, so I wasn't worried. After I activated aforementioned console, I ran into a room to seek shelter from a centaur that was whipping me with its tentacles. I safe scummed myself through a toilet, crouched, then waited until the centaur ran back to wherever the fuck it lived. Fox was finally free, and I followed him while he killed all the super mutants in his path. He retrieved the gek for me, we parted ways, I was captured by the Enclave, President Eden called off his dog, and I leveled up twice. With two levels worth of skill points and the pacifist perk, my speech skill was up to 92. I ignored the Enclave soldiers that were lighting my ass up with their fancy laser pointers and reported to the president. I breathed a sigh of relief as I took the modified vial of FEV and made my escape. The last two Enclave soldiers proved formidable. One had a fully automatic laser pointer and the other had a missile launcher and he seemed to place no value on his own well-being as he nearly blew off both my legs and my chest. Then he exploded me again right before I left. Nevertheless, I was back out into the wilderness, among the dead trees and the dead grass and the dead enclave soldiers that had the misfortune of running into a super mutant with a minigun and a thirst for knowledge. Fox and I parted ways again, this time for the last time, and I was off to the citadel. That was a lie. Remember what I said about Timmy Nussbaum earlier? That too was a lie. Timmy Nussbaum must die. So I decided that the war for the capital wasteland could be put on hold for a bit while I ensure that a child is killed by virtual communists. Inside Smith Casey's garage, I could actually press the button to get inside Vault 112. I spoke to the Robobrain and did not get a Vault 112 jumpsuit. Instead it told me that it was not at liberty to chat right now. I never even knew that was a thing it could say. I wasn't sure what to do next. Once I reached the loungers, I got the scientific pursuit quest, which made me think that I could return to the Robobrain to get a jumpsuit, but that didn't work either. Then I thought that there might be more jumpsuits in the equipment room. Unfortunately, you need a science skill of 75 to hack the terminal to get in. And I did not have time for that. So I left, leaving Timmy Newsbomb trapped in Tranquility Lane. He got off easy as far as I'm concerned. After spending almost 20 minutes running in circles in Grey Ditch because I'm stupid, I arrived at the Citadel and... You've gotta be kidding me. The gate is still closed. Ugh, I wanna die. Alright, okay. There's only one option. You might think that I could just run straight for the Jefferson Memorial and activate Project Purity myself. It worked in my No Pit Boy run, why wouldn't it work here? Let me remind you that I'm a baby. Do you remember what happened in my Fallout 3 baby playthrough? No? Well, here's a reminder. And I can't reach the buttons. I can reach a few of them, but not the ones in the back. This means that I'll have to glitch my way into the Citadel again. To be honest with you, I was more annoyed doing it this time than I was last time. It wasn't really any harder, it just took longer because I'm a fucking midget. Inside the Citadel, I spoke to Sentinel Lions and got a suit of power armor. Then I followed her and the rest of the gang outside to begin the final assault. Can you guess what happened next? The gate opening is just a formality, you see, because there's an invisible wall! I got lucky and thought of something before I broke out the Drano and started doing shots. Fast travel. When you fast travel to the Citadel, it places you outside the gate and praise Todd Howard it worked. As you're well aware by now, I detest the part of Fallout 3 where you follow Liberty Prime, but because I moved so slowly, I could push the auto run key and do other stuff while I waited. Then Sentinel Lions and I made our way inside the Jefferson Memorial. She's a shitty fighter, which is why I wanted my speech skill as high as possible. I ignored the Enclave soldiers and confronted Augustus Autumn. Even with speech at 100, I leveled up after I spoke to Elder Lions in the Citadel, you only have a 63% chance of convincing Autumn to leave peacefully. I had to reload a save to successfully pass both speech checks, but I did. Then I sent Sarah Lions inside the purifier to die, spammed baby noises as she died a painful death, and after wanting to die for the last few hours, beat Fallout 3 without attacking anything. That run was not fun. 
And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout 3 without attacking anything. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.